Shalom. Shalom and welcome. Welcome to the White Rose Family Channel. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Simoniah. And these are the words I'm compelled to present before an awakening set apart nation. If you are one who seek to do the will of the Almighty Creator, the Almighty Father, Yahuwah, I consider you my brother, my sister, my family. This series, The Final Exodus Countdown 2023, it's about the gathering of those who have been selected by the Almighty Father to fulfill being gathered from the four corners of the earth as it is written in Isaiah 11, 12. It contained messages for not only those who will be gathered, but those who will be martyrs for, you, for Yahushua's name, those who will be led astray because of unbelief, because of milk, because of being unlearned. But they are yet our brothers and sisters. You see, my brothers and sisters, many people think when they say led astray, I mean, they, they led and they're no longer set apart. But we have set apart ones. We each have different degrees of maturity. We stumble, we fall, our flesh war against the spirit. But there are those who will walk in obedience, who must fulfill the final exodus. Countdown 23, I believe, will be by the month known as December 21st, 2023. We will see this exodus come into its fulfillment. Yashara, oh Yashara, if you listen to the beginning of the first two videos of this series, Final Exodus, you will see more definitive words of why I believe Countdown 2023 has begun. My brothers and sisters, in this installment of the Final Exodus Countdown, I want to bring your attention to the acronym WOW. Yes, WOW. And it says number two because I'm using this acronym more than once, but this acronym will have a different definition. And this second installment of WOW I want to bring your attention to the words walls, onion, and wheels. Walls, onions, and wheel. But let me say this, my brothers and sisters. The views expressed in the, in the messages that I delivered do not necessarily reflect the views of the owners, management, shareholders, or sponsors of this media platform. With that said, let's get into wow. Wow, as it relates to the final exodus. I will make the case why this, why this is important. My brothers and sisters, let me say this. One day, one day, O oh Yasharal, the question I present to you is what will your words be? I wish that I would have, I should have, or I'm glad I did. One day, Oh, Yashara. Think about that. Pray about that. Are you confident in the decisions that you make? Yashara, oh, Yashara, before I get into the visions of walls and before I present this thing in which I want you to be familiar with, hold on a second. I use a green screen. And it seems too bright. So I want to turn and lighting here is too bright. Okay, I think that's a little better. And I will adjust it even more so. Bear with me, my brothers and sisters. Okay, I think that's a little better. Maybe a little dark. My brothers and sisters, I ask your patience. As you can see, I make I make some corrections as I can. Let 
Wow. Okay, we'll go with this. Let me ask you some questions, my brothers and sisters. I said we would go with this. My mistake. Let me try one more thing here. My brother says, let me ask you some questions. If there was a proof and evidence of a great prophetic event occurring, while at the same time there was mass destruction going on, one, if it was destruction going on, would it not be the desire of each and every individual to move away from the destruction, to move to safety. And if safety was identified as one particular area or specific area, and it took time to get to that safe zone, would not people gather together and try to get to that safe, that main safe point together in some instances? Let me ask you, do you believe end times are true? Do you believe there will be earthquakes in diverse places? Do you believe there will be volcanoes and tsunamis? Do you believe that a third of the population will be destroyed? If you believe this, my brothers and sisters, have you established expectations of how this will come to be? If there was a situation where a crowd of people were circling around to hear one or two or more speak, giving instructions on what to do in extreme circumstances? Do you think everybody, if it was thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, do you think every one of them will be able to hear firsthand what a person is saying in person without the aid of some type of megaphone, microphone technology, what have you? You see, we talk about end times, but we don't take into consideration what that looks like. My brothers and sisters, I awoke the other day and I saw in the state of Virginia, a massive crowd of people circling around the shore of Norfolk the shipping yard and the numbers grew larger and larger as it spans outside of the Norfolk area. Hundreds of thousands, millions of people coming to Virginia to escape the destruction and to be gathered with the desire to want to be gathered from the four corners of the earth. And you have heard me say, not everyone will go. Not everyone will be delivered. There will be those left behind who will die. Those who are our brothers and sisters will sleep. Bodies will go to the earth. Spirit will go to that bosom of Abraham that has been prepared until resurrection day. Yashua, the reality is people talk about earthquakes in diverse places. People talk about areas that's not by them, but they don't talk about where you should be going, what you should be doing. It's a matter of time before people will begin to move. And you've heard me say that it will be mostly children. Because see, as massive movement go, when it gets to the point where there's not enough room for everyone, there will be adults. There will be parents and guardians that say, well, take my child so that he or she or they may go to safety, that they may be participants. Listen, O Yasharal, I'm not here to be fear-mongering you. Fear, causing fear. I'm here to present the realities of what I believe has been revealed to me to present to you, O Yasharal. And what I see is this. People locking arms intermittently, drawing circles around their children, their wives, their elders, their handicapped, 
to protect them as they intermittently move towards the exit point on the Western Hemisphere and as they intermittently move from the exit point of the prospective countries that they're in. There'll be times where they will lock arms, circle around them, and form a wall. And that wall will be ordered by the hand, by the mouth, by the power and might of the Almighty Father Yahuwah. And I will present some scriptures speaking on how Yahuwah will be as that fire wall to protect those who will fulfill the final exodus, to, to guard. Now imagine a massive crowd around the port of Virginia loading up ships, container ships, for those who will be a part of the final exodus. Imagine a wall that protects outsiders from getting through the wall of people to try to crowd the boats and the ships. But the wall is so thick with set-apart ones who will sacrifice themselves for the sake of those getting on the ship to be gathered from the four corners of the earth. This will come to be in vision, locked arms, prayer, massive crowds, too congested. By the time they can break the wall of the congestion, the ships would have sailed. They would have moved on towards the promised land. And this is what I've seen, O Yasharal. Come with me as I continue. Let me read the following, my brothers and sisters. Jeremiah 15, 20 says, And I shall make you... To this people, a strong bronze wall. Could bronze be speaking of the color of Hebrews? Mostly bronze. Is that a possibility? And they shall fight against you, but not overcome you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares Yahuwah. You see, it says the to deliver you. There will be representation of those who are delivered and there will be those who will be delivered into the bosom of Abraham. Let me continue. Ezekiel 42, 20 says, on the four sides he measured it and it had a wall all around, 500 long, 500 wide to separate the set apart places from the common. A wall, my brothers and sisters, sometimes a wall is necessary. A physical wall, a human wall. The vision I had was a wall of Hebrews and those who have been grafted into the body of Yasharal, together made one by Yahushua Mashiach, taking on the label of a bronze set apart wall, protecting those that are being loaded on the boats and the ships, protecting the pathway for those who will be gathered. It will come, O Yasharal. Let me also share with you Zechariah chapter 2, verse 3 through 5, just to give you an example. You see, everything isn't new. There are some things that are cyclical that have occurred before in some way, shape, or form. Hear these words, O Yasharal. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 3 through 5 said, And see, the messenger who was speaking to me was going out, and another messenger was coming out to meet him. And he said to him, run, speak to your, speak to this young man saying, Jerusalem is to remain unwalled because of many men and livestock in it. For I myself am to her, declares Yahuwah, a wall of fire all around. And for esteem, I am in her midst. We will see such actions, O Yasharal, in the coming days as we are gathered, as we move towards the places where the Almighty Father will have us to be. Yasharal, O oh Yasharal, and from this wall, as I prayed, as I saw this wall of set-apart ones locking arms and protecting those that will be gathered, I began to see an image of onions. And I said, what does onions have to do with the final exodus. What does the onion have to do with the wall? But I saw visions of Yasharal in specific places gathering and intermittently small groups becoming larger groups and even larger groups. And what came to mind is to think about onions. 
Consider this, Yasharal. What do you see here? If you're looking at this slide to the upper left, there is an onion. Yes, an onion. What do you see? If you were to take a moment and say, well, I don't wanna be talking about no onions. Let's just get to the meat of the matter. I say to you, oh, Yasharal, we can learn by what I'm getting ready to share. It can be something new to you, or it could be something reinforcing our positions as set apart ones, as a set apart nation. The upper left hand corner, I have an onion. It's a whole onion. And you see it has a skin on it. That skin protects the inner part, the inner part of the first layer. So what's under the skin is then the first layer. And if you look to the right, to your right, you see the onion cut in half. And you might not be able to see it clearly, but there are layers. If you've ever sliced the onion from top to bottom, you will see layers. Or even in cutting it sideways, you will know that there are layers to the onion. And the Almighty Father had me review the onion. Not only review it, but slice it. Literally grab it, cut it, and slice it, and show it to you. And if you look at the bottom left, you'll see the onion face down that had been sliced from top to bottom. And if you notice the dark portion of the picture in the bottom left, it shows roots that have been clipped, the root system of the onion. And if you look at the bottom right, you see the top part of the onion. And it shows where it would sprout out, where the sprout was once there green, absorbing the energy, the energy to feed into the onion plant, to assist with its coming into its full maturity, an onion. Yasharal or Yasharal. The vision of an onion. Actually, let me go back. I want to say this. This wall would be as the root system of Yasharal gathering. And the layers would mean that first layer, second and third layers would be layers set apart ones that lay down their lives for their brethren that will be gathered from the four corners of the earth. So the wall will have la layers. The wall will be strong. It will be thick. It will be crowded, just as an onion. And the root system of an onion, just as we eat an onion sometimes, if you eat onions on anything or put onion in cooking, or if you've seen somebody, they cut off the root. And that root would have served its purpose in bringing forth the mature onion. So it is with Yasharal, those who are mature enough to say, I lay down my life for my brother, for my sister. Or I know from the beginning what was expected. Or I understand what is expected for the set apart family of Yasharal to live. So they will be as the root system and the layers would be reinforced walls of set apart ones protecting those that will gather on the ships to be gathered from the four corners of the earth. And the sprout that you see are those equipped with the information to vet, to examine, to absorb the energy from the Almighty Father that He's given them to lead and provide instruction. And just as each portion of the onion has its part, so will it be in the coming together in its final exodus. There will be those that will die once they serve what they're supposed to do. There will be those that will die for Yahushua's name. There will be those led astray. Let me continue, O Yasharal. Visions of onions. You see, as we come together, there will be layers. Layers of responsibility and tasks. Consider Matthew 16, 24 through 26, as I read it, my brothers and sisters. Then Yahushua said to his taught ones, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me. You see, as an onion, as that layer, as that wall, protecting those that are being gathered, we will have to deny ourselves. And for the sake of Yahushua, do what is necessary to guard and assure those who will be loaded on the specific boats or vehicles that they will be transported to
to the promised land. It says, for whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole, the, all the world and loses his own life? And what shall a man give in exchange for his life? Sacrifices will be made in the coming days, O Yasharal. Many layers, my brothers and sisters, there are many members, but yet a body of one. Consider Romans 12. Also consider 1 Corinthians 12 and Ephesians 4. 1 Corinthians 12th chapter and Ephesians 4th chapter. But I'm going to read an excerpt from Romans 12, 3 through 8. For it reads as follows. For I say through the favor which has been given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he should think, but to think soberly as Almighty One has given to each a measure of belief. So don't think, I got to go in this final exodus. I have to be the one. They need me. None of us is inexpensive, my brothers and sisters. Whomever the Almighty Father chooses to protect those that are being gathered, to guard them, to ensure their passage, their exit points, let us do so out of obedience and with the strength and power and might to endure by the living guidance of the Almighty Father. He said, for we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. Just like I showed the different layers, the root system, the sprout, the skin of an onion. So it is with Yasharal. There's a part to protect. There's a part to ensure what we've received is passed on. There's a part that is given to those who have the ability to teach and share and yield and stir up the energy among Yasharal as we press on towards the promised land. He says here in fifth verse, so we the many are one body and Messiah and members each one to one of one another. Not having a different not having different, now having different gifts, now having different gifts, according to the favor which was given to us, let us use them accordingly. If prophecy according to the proportion of belief, if serving in the serving, or he who is teaching in teaching, or he who, is encur he who encourages in encouragement, or he who is sharing in sincerity, he who is leading in diligence, he who shows compassion joyously. Many layers, my brothers and sisters, many members. And there's much work to be done. Yashara O Yashara. The acronym W O W. I started out with the wall. There will be a wall. There will be walls of set apart ones who will protect the children, the women, the elders, the handicapped the chosen ones that will fulfill the final exodus. There will be those who will protect them until they exit. And we who are to chosen to protect them, we will go to our death. You see, you can't have earthquakes and destruction. You can't have the scroll closing without death. And keep in mind that the scriptures say that he reigned on the just and the unjust and that he has no respect to person. When it says we are not appointed to wrath, for destruction to come and we go to sleep, we died for Yahushua's name. We were not victims of wrath to non-believers' wrath, for they have no other direction of knowing where they're going. But to the children of Yahshua, to die in gain, to die in Yahushua is gain. So I presented the onions to let you know parts will be left behind that served its purpose, parts of the set-apart nation. And now I want to bring you to the third letter of the acronym for this installment. Wall, onion, now wheels. Do you think that we can be gathered from the four corners of the earth without movement? And do you think that movement would not involve wheels of some sort? Transportation of some sort? Consider this, O Yasharal. Ezekiel chapter 1. I want, to re I want to read verse 15 through 21. And I look, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 15 through 21. And I looked at the living creatures and saw a wheel on the earth beside each living creature 
with its four faces. The appearance of the wheels, plural, and their works were like the appearance of beryl, and all four sides had the same form. The appearance of their works were, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Could that be similar to the layers of onion that I spoke of earlier? Could Ezekiel have saw the formation of set apart ones gathering and they gathering in one place and they making sure that all sides are protected as they navigate towards the exit point in the direction that they need to go to fulfill the final exodus? Could the wheel within a wheel represent structure as the final exodus takes shape. And it goes on to say in the 17th verse, when they went, they went in any one of four directions. They did not turn aside when they went. And their rims were high and awesome, and their rims were covered with eyes all around the four of them. Could these be messengers assisting in the final exodus? And could the wheel move from many different directions? Some coming from the north, the south, the east, the west. And he goes on to say, and when the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Could that be talking about once the exodus is complete? Once we are where we supposed to be, that lifting up, could it be speaking of the time when Yahushua comes back and we are caught up in the clouds with him? Now, let me say this, my brothers and sisters. When I say caught up in the clouds, I believe upon Yahushua's return, it's going to be the same time the two witnesses of Revelation are raised up from the street after three and a half days of being dead and Yahushua comes back. I believe it would be like you lifting a salt shaker off a table to wipe it clean and then put the salt shaker back. And I believe we will be lifted up, caught up in the clouds with Yahushua and the twinkling of an eye and the new heaven, the new earth, we will see a transformation take place. The greatest of all earthquakes, new land mass, fresh land, we will see something magnificent, magnanimous occur. But all this will not happen without movement. Visions of wheels, my brothers and sisters. And whichever direction Yashua needed to go, they didn't have to say, if you're leading the charge eastward, and then you need to go south. You don't need to say, wait, wait, let me go around to the south part of the group so I can keep lead. No, you stay in your part. When you have to go south, the person on the south takes lead. North, north take lead, east or west. Leading as the spirit of Yahushua is directing us for the coming together, ultimately to the true Mount Sinai. My brothers and sisters, it goes on to say, wherever the spirit was to go, they went because there the spirit went and the wheels were lifted together with them and the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. And when those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. It was the spirit of Yahuwah within us Visions of wheels. I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, there will be deliverance in wheels as Ezekiel is describing. It's talking about specific formation as we are gathered. And when we gather to the set apart land that has been given to us, there will be structure and formation to protect the family of Yasharal until the physical return of Yahushua HaMashiach. Let me read the following, Isaiah eleven twelve. 12, I've read it over, and let me read it again. And he shall raise a banner of the nation and gather the outcasts of Yasharal, and assemble the dispersed of Yehuda from the four corners of the earth. Together means movement, brings deliverance. Isaiah 43, 5 through 7 says, do, do not fear, for I am with you. I shall bring your seed from the east and gather you from the west. I shall say to the north, give them up and to the south. Do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar, my daughters from the ends of the earth. All those who are called by my name, who I've created, form even for my esteem. 
Yashraal or Yashraal. These are those he formed for his esteem. In this regard, this is specifically talking about those who are chosen for the final exodus that will be gathered. Walls, onion wheels. Understand this. We must get to know one another, my brothers and sisters. We must understand. We must vet. We must learn how to yield to the spirit of you who are working in us, through us, one towards another. Walls, onions, wheels. The walls, walls of protection by the power and might of Yahuwah, working in us and through us. The onion, there are layers, there are steps, there are processes that we must witness and partake in to ensure those that will be gathered. Wheels, there will be movement, there will be transportation. Because one day, O oh Yasharal, one day the question will ask, what will your words be? I ask this question now. Are you prepared? What will your words be? Would they be, I wish that I would have, I should have, or I'm glad I did? Yasharal, O oh Yasharal. Walls, onions, wheels. Simple example. But I say to you, sincere moments are ahead. Out of all the uncertainty, I ask you, as I ask often, are you satisfied with your moray, your teacher, your community head? Are you satisfied? Are they equipping you on what to do in the event of their absence or demise? Are they equipping you on knowing what to do in the event? Earthquakes, media showers, wars break out, civil unrest, and you cannot reach them. Are they teaching you how to lean into the spirit of Yahuwah sin and use his name? To lean into the comforter, the teacher, the guide, to stir your spirit up and hear in the silence. Out of all the noise, but in the silence, are they teaching you how to discern his voice? Are they teaching you how to weigh the scriptures that you study and recognize the life in them to determine whether it is the spirit of Yahushua influencing you or not? Are you engaged in conversation to know that you know what is expected of you in this final exodus? Will you be a member of the wall? Are you willing to lay down your life for a brother or sister so that they can go? Will you be among the layers protecting those that leave? Will you be among the ranks of those who will leave? Will you have the strength and fortitude to carry on the teachings of set-apartness that were imparted from those who gave us the history and guidance that we need to move on. Have you been trained on how to teach another? To stir up the spirit in another? To pass the energy on necessary for Yashraal to move to that set-apart land? What say you, O Yashraal? Would you believe, do you believe, that the tasks that are assigned you are assigned by the Almighty Father? Prepare to witness what those tasks are, for we are being trained. Hear these words, Yashraal, there's much work to be done. Walls, onion, onions, wheels. Yes, there are degrees of things, there are dynamics that must take place to fulfill the final exodus. And we must learn how to do it and do it strongly and accurately as led by the Almighty Father. Yashra, O oh Yashra, stay tuned. There's much more. For there are a lot of details regarding this final exodus. There's a lot that must come to be. You think that you've seen protests and gatherings yesterday, last year, and in times past. A massive gathering will soon take place we will begin to see millions move from the West Coast and start making their way towards the East Coast. We will see millions ramp up from South America coming up to North America. We will see hundreds of thousands, if not even millions coming from Canada, making their way towards Virginia. The wall, my brothers and sisters, a wall of set apart ones gathered by the power and might of the Almighty Father Yahuwah. Some will be transported to the Promised Land. Some will make sacrifices for those that are transported. What say you, O Yashara? 
It's time to have realistic and sincere dialogue and prayer about these matters. It's time to get with those who present the realities of the promises of the Almighty Father. Yashara, oh Yashara, I salute your patience and your tolerance as you go through these messages. And I say to you, consider subscribing, sharing these messages with others. They may hear something that you miss. They may hear something and miss something that you got, that you can impart. No, this is what he was saying. Engage the conversation regarding the realities of this final exodus, O Yasharal. Stay tuned. Prepare to witness unity emerge among a set-apart nation. If you'd like to get involved, become connected. Engage in discussions. Vet and examine the words I present to you. Reach out, O Yasharal. I'd like to hear from you. For those of you who have listened to some of my old videos, I changed my email and I only have that one email and that's seminar at gmail.com for right now. Seminar at gmail.com. But if you cannot remember that, visit yaswatchman.net. There's a submission form. Fill it out and I will reach out to you. I will respond to you. And I know it's not about me, but I will share what I know and give what I can give. I ask for your help, O Yasharal, with resources, with imparting knowledge, with teaching, with presenting the words and the details of what must come to be. I ask for your help financially. I have set up cash out, cash tag White Roads Family. Cash tag White Roads Family. If you fill out that submission form, I will also submit to you other means in which you can help me financially if you so desire, besides the cash app. Yashara, oh Yashara, one day, one day we will say hallelujah. We will witness some say, I wish I should have, I could have, but what say you, oh Yashara? Choose this moment wisely. What directions, what steps will you take? These words, this message, reach you for a purpose. Seek to discern what that purpose is, my brothers and sisters. On that note, I pray that you are in good health. I pray that you are encouraged how to navigate through all the noise and conflict that is rising. In the midst of all uncertainty, I pray that the Almighty Father strengthen your loins strengthen your mind and your spirit and that we grow to trust and believe that the Almighty Father in the name of Yahushua will fulfill all his promises to his set apart children on that note I say to you my brother my sister behold the hand of Yahuwah will intensify before us on that note Shalom